welcome to the Healing Broken Families podcast. I'm Barbara LaPointe, live from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And each week, I host healing conversations around divorce, parental alienation, and high conflict personalities. I am very excited, super curious to be sitting down today with advocate and author Kenneth Gottfried. And I hope I said your last name correct. Absolutely, you did. Good. Well, welcome to the show. It's it's an honor to meet you, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Thank you for having me on. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Um, before we really take a deep dive into this, um, our podcast today is um, bringing a focus to family court, to the systemic structure of family court in North America. So this podcast is a little bit about practicing truth and standing in it. So. Um, I wanted to also preface and just remind everyone listening today out there in our audience that I am a divorce coach, a mother, and um, a woman who spent seven years in family court. And Kenneth is an actor, uh, an activist and an author, but we are not lawyers. We are not psychologists. We're not dispensing any um, legal advice. And we are um, advocating for healing and um and restoration of love in this very um, the system that I refer to as a very unloving system. But he'll have Kenneth. I think you'll have a lot to say. So let's just start with you've got you've got a slogan and you've got a call to action and a website called um, Child Abusive Judges. And on there it asks us to report your judge. So absolutely. Um, what does that mean? Report your judge. Um, reporting your judge is when, a, <clears throat> as most people know, if they've gone through divorce court or family court, um, a judge has no problems issuing and ordering domestic violence or child abuse. And, you know, anybody who's been through parental alienation, anybody who's been through the family court knows that you are guilty before you're proven innocent. Um, a judge has no problems removing your Fifth Amendment rights as far as a fundamental right of being a parent, has no problem order, you know, making his orders where they separate children from parents just willy-nilly because they feel like it or because they have hearsay in court. And so, um, it, you know, it's just, it's such a corrupt system that... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know this. I mean, if you've been through it, um, you have long hair. Oh, you must be a hippie doing drugs. Boom. You can get your, your kids taken away just because of that. You know what? I, I think it's such an important conversation because we have been through it. But so many people out there um, don't know what's going on in this very corrupt system. And they would never imagine what could happen to them inside once you're in the system on the inside and then you can never get out absolutely and it's so funny what you just said about my hair because it really is that simplistic in family court but you're guilty you got to prove yourself that you're not a dope addict or you're not a drug addict and you know you have to like they will make you take piss tests before they've done anything but they will protect the kids best interest of the child is their go-to which is really how can we order child abuse, but yet look like we're doing nice stuff? Mm-hmm. Yes, there are actually, um, there is a lot of abuse, a lot of unloving decisions made in family court. Children are separated from their parents and some would go so far as to say that family court is actually child trafficking. Oh, it is, it is. without a doubt it is. How you so? Know. How so, Kenneth? <laughs> okay, let me let me start by asking you a question. If and I and I I know how many how many children do you have? I have three children. Okay, let's let's take somebody else. I don't want to use you, so because we'll get emotional. But let's say uh, Joanne or Joe Blow has a child. And they're being sodomized at the age of nine. And you know who's sodomizing. Can you imagine going to the Division of Child Services and saying, I would like to report suspected child abuse? 
and them telling you to leave, that's not their job. Go away. Can you imagine going in to the police or the sheriff's department? Hey, my child is being sodomized. Uh, I need to file a report. No, no, go away. Where does that leave a person? Where does that leave that person that's watching their own child being abused in front of their face and they can't get any help? Now, I know you're all about love and, you know, bringing back healing and stuff like that. I'm not. I'm a pacifist, but yet I'm a realist. So at what point does somebody have to do the extreme? Which is in America, you know, do you have uh, do you have the Second Amendment in Canada where you have the right to bear arms? Um, yeah, there's quite a few guns here, yes. Okay. Yeah. At what point do you protect your kids and use your Second Amendment right? Because you are watching your child being abused in front of your face and the entities that are supposed to protect children refuse to do that well At I, what think, I, I think that what you're saying and what what i'm saying is that what we're seeing is that the system is letting us down and it's not protecting our children and it's it's failing us and so what's happening what you're describing is we become so powerless and so victimized by the system, right? Yeah, totally. Does that totally. Like, but it drives people to extremes, like yeah. suicide, um, just to protect their children or get, you know, they're so, we're made so powerless in this, what I'm going to refer to it as an unloving system. Oh, extremely, extremely. And that, that's, that, you know, you hit the nail on the head. It is, you know, how can you say you are best interest of the child and a loving system when you're ordering child abuse, when you're ordering domestic violence? The United States Department of Justice states emotional abuse, emotional domestic violence is harming one's relationship with his or her children. Very simple. Boom. Dot. Okay, harming one's relationship with his or her children. Family court does this all the time. Okay, and they can't make rhyme or reason because they do this because of hearsay. They don't do this with a jury trial. Many times people get accused in family court of really heinous criminal things and nothing happens. They wind up going through the DSS. They wind up going through this. Okay, he's not crazy. Okay, she's not an abuser. Okay, you know, whatever. But you've lost what? One month, six months, 12 months with that child? During which time, the anxiety of that child, the trauma from that child. I mean, the American Psychological Association, who I hate with a passion because they know what they, they are, murderers and child abusers. Not me saying it, it's them saying it. They wrote a letter to President Trump back in 2018, June 4th. Anybody can read it, anybody could find it, saying that separating the children at the border is criminal, is trauma causing, is abusive. You need to stop. And when I wrote them a letter and spoke to their presidents, Dr. Jessica Daniel, uh, Anthony, uh, God, I can't even remember all their names, but all the presidents for the last six years of the American Psychological Association, they all have refused to respond to my letter, and I've spoke to them or contacted them personally. So you have an organization that knows this is going on, knows it abuses children, knows it causes people to commit suicide, knows it is like so detrimental to the family structure, and they do nothing. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. They don't do nothing. They fight against you. Even though they said, and they know, decades of experience, empirical data, separating a parent from a child is trauma-causing. They know that when it's one, two, three thousand people at the border, but they tend to forget it, and they fight against you when it's in family court. Going to family court is literally like 
going, <laughs> excuse me, going to a war, going into a war. And um, the system protects the system. So mm -hmm. they protect their own. So I, I would suspect what you're saying is correct, Kenneth, that they, they do know what they're doing. Totally. Um, they, they do have an agenda on destroying the uh, family unit, yep. um, destroying good parents, um, separating children from mothers and fathers too. Um, but why? Why are they doing it? <laughs> uh, it's simple. Uh, profits, profiteering. I mean, you make money from trafficking kids. You even said this. I, I think this is a traf uh, child trafficking. It totally is a child trafficking. In the U.S., I don't know how things are in other places. In the U.S., if you separate a child from a parent and don't allow that parent to see them, they have to pay child support. Title 4D of the Social Security Act in the U.S. says if I pay $2,000, my, my monthly stipend was $2,400 for child support, spousal support. When I paid $2,400 a month, the federal government will give as a grant, no repay, $2,400, $2,400, $2,500 as a grant to the states. They're incentivized to rip families apart. Now... That is, that is to the tune of seventy billion dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Period. That's you know, the it's are staggering. It's a fact. But what people don't realize, they look at, oh my God, seventy billion. That's a lot. It's not seventy billion. If it was seventy billion dollars, you know, whatever, it's three hundred billion dollars. Because as you know, that's per year. You got to pay attorneys. You got to pay court. You know, you got to pay uh, forensic psychologists. You got to pay psychologists. You got to pay for psychologicals. You got to pay for all these players that are in this, which literally amounts to another two hundred and thirty billion dollars for the bar association, their members, the psychological associations, to get their grift. You know, it really is such a play to pay system. Except you can't. What people don't realize is that once you enter the system you can't file an opt-out you can't say i don't want to play so you are forced you are forced and you in a way you do become a criminal to do things like have a psychologist come in at 20 or thirty thousand dollars and do an evaluation that takes a year and you don't have any free will choice or you become a criminal absolutely you're forced to do this so families are literally being driven to bankruptcy Oh, they're being driven. They're being driven past bankruptcy right in the P complex PTSD. Almost all the parents that I'm dealing with who are in this child psychological, you know, life are dealing with some form of PTSD, complex PTSD, because they didn't steal their kids for a day and have one traumatic event or a week. They've stolen their kids for months and years. Yes, exactly. And it's, almost, it's almost as if your children become wards of the state. And so you think that you're a parent and you get to raise your child and then you find out that, no, actually the state has a stake in your child and they're going to raise your child. So from a, and from a, ther and just to comment on what you just said, from a therapeutic perspective, sometimes we might have a, an overwhelming situation where we have a traumatic response and then we can heal from that. But with family court, it's prolonged. It's it's years of our of one's life. So and that and just just to touch on that PTSD. And here. and that's why it's complex PTSD. PTSD, one event, two events, boom, you have traumatic results from that. Not seeing your children fighting with domestic violence and child abuse on a daily basis and watching it happen to your family over years, most of the time, it causes irreputable, irreputable harm within that person. That's why it's complex PTSD. Yeah. And so, you know, and many people don't make it. Many people revert to suicide. And I just love how people and entities forget what they're doing. 
let's take veterans affairs. They don't give a shit about veterans killing themselves. They have all this stuff. Oh, if you feel this, if you feel that, you know, um, you know, you feel like suicide, call us. But yet when it's something like this, that, you know, nearly, or I'm going to say a hundred percent of all people that go through this, who've never had anything destructive about themselves, go through suicidal ideation. You cannot not go through it because you're losing your kids. You're losing everything. You're losing everything you made. You have that. And yet veterans who are committing suicide, many of them are in family court, not able to see their kids because all you have to say in family court, that one's a veteran. He has mental issues and I'm afraid my kids are afraid to see him. Period. Done. That, that veteran is cut off. And they're destroyed, you know, and unfortunately, 100% of all these people, parental alienation, you know, a shared persecutory delusion. I like to mention that, you know, when you say uh, parental alienation, it's a lightning rod and it needs to be considered what it really is with it, which is a shared persecutory delusion and domestic violence using a child as a weapon that will cause any parent to think about suicide and suicidal ideation because nobody can sit there and just watch their child abused in front of them. And so the, all these veterans and veteran affairs and whatever, they kind of step away because they don't want to get involved. All the uh, psychologists, the many psychologists step away because they don't, they, they, they don't even know what to look for. They're, they're, uh, I'm sorry. I'll ramble on this. Go ahead. Well, and also lawyers. I think every part of the system doesn't want to take accountability for their part in this um, family court uh, corruption because they're all profiting from it. And if yep. they take accountability for it, then they say, well, maybe I'm – no, but I'm a good person at, while they're making $500 an hour off, off of you for years and years. And they – so, uh, but I'm looking at the best interest of the child, and that is such a um, such a catchphrase for for almost supporting all of their abuse to, for the kids now, and towards good parents. How can we report a judge for child abuse? Because I know that's probably what people are thinking in our audience. Yes, and judge? yes, because most people already realize if they're already in this mix. Uh, you can't go to Division of Child Services or Social Services. You cannot go in and say, I would like to report this judge for making these orders for, you know, orders for child abuse and domestic violence, because they will look at you and say, get out of my office. I'm not going to do it. And it really brings back. I'm, I'm not going to go on this tangent right now. So and you can't go to the sheriff's department to report child abuse by a judge. Right now I'm dealing with a child abuser called Sheriff Len Hageman who refuses to refuse to write a report, a single report where I was accusing these people, the judges and some attorneys of being child abusers. He refused to do it. Because I have childabusejudges.com, I get calls. I got calls from a couple of friends who are like, I'm with the same judge. This judge is such a, you know, a child abuser and piece of crap. And they can't go to the sheriff because, oh, we've never had anybody report a judge. Yeah, you have. You had me. You had this other person. You had this other person. But they're protecting him. And I love the fact I love, how can I say this? I, again, I find this very sad. But every time I hear a cop who gets killed or a deputy who gets killed or a judge that gets killed, in my mind, there's one less child abuser. You cannot be a judge, be a sheriff, be a, you know, a division of child services director and not write a report when somebody reports child abuse. That is just, it, it's, it's horrible. So what I've done back to your question, when these reports come in, they come into me. 
I'm in talks with a guy by the name of Richard Sutherland. He's an FBI agent in Charlotte and in Hickory, North Carolina. I have sent him all the complaints. I've sent him a couple of letters. He was asking me, well, what am I, why am I saying this? Why am I doing this? And I don't want to make this all about me, but I'm going to give you a little history. Um, ju you know, Judge uh, War F. Warren Hughes denied me due process. Okay, February 2015, because he allowed a counselor to come in and speak as an expert witness with me only having a two day, one and a half day notice. So it's that five days in North Carolina. She was later, one year later, convicted of ethics violations by the North Carolina Counseling Board. Okay, and she was ordered never to see my kids again. But because she was there, and because she testified that I shouldn't see my children, then, you know, the judge refused to give me any time with my kids and ordered child abuse, psychological child abuse and emotional trauma. Because here this, here this therapist was. So without getting too much, this continued for a year. He refused to let me see my kids for another year. Um, another judge stepped in, Judge Hal G. Harrison, who is an absolute child abuser and should be convicted and thrown in jail because of his actions. He refused me due process February on December 3rd, 2015, refused me due process um, February 2016. This is the kind of things that happen in court. That judge, Judge Hal G. Harrison, ordered my past attorney to the stand to testify against me in an hour and a half. I want to repeat that so everyone hears this. That scumbag of a judge, and I apologize, I'm from New Jersey, I shouldn't talk that, but that scumbag of a judge, that child abusing judge, Judge Hal G. Harrison, ordered my attorney to the stand, to my previous attorney, to testify against me. You know, um, I, this I is hear, the. I, I hear Go ahead. How I'm just curious. How long have you been separated from your children? Nine years. Nine years. Yes, and so, but these things, I would love to say I'm the only one that this stuff happens to, but as you know, this happens across the board, all over the U.S., all over Canada, all over the U.K. It's the numbers are ginormous, but someone who's maybe just watching and listening to us. Uh, to be a devil's advocate might say, well, Ken's crazy and Barbara's, they're crazy because that seems to be right. That just seems to be um, a way to really disempower people uh, totally. so them as, as crazy or they didn't get the verdict that they wanted or didn't shake down the way they wanted. So now they're they're mad. But really, when you start looking at the statistics, um, which leads me to my next question. So how many how many people have have checked out your website or responded to your website or actually filed a, a report your judge? How many people have reported their judge? Uh, over two hundred and sixty, just in America. There's fifty states in America. Fifty states in America. We have forty four states, and two hundred and sixty judges have been accused of child abuse. That's um, significant. Yeah, that is. I was hoping to get like 30 in a month. And I've only had it up for like a month and a couple of weeks. People haven't heard about it yet. And yeah, so, yeah. And so the, the problem, now you said something that is very poignant. And I want to point this out. Um, how, why, you know, Barbara, you must be crazy. Ken, you're, you're nuts. You know, you didn't like this in the divorce. I'm dealing with that with Richard Sutherland from the FBI. He was like, well, you know, this looks like you're just not happy with a divorce. Would you, and I wrote this in my letter to him the other week. Can you imagine going up to a child who's 10 and say, my, one of my parents sodomized me or one, this judge sodomized me. And the FBI agent or the sheriff or whatever says, did this, did this happen in a divorce? Yeah, they were getting a divorce. Well, sorry, there's nothing we can do. Sorry about your sodomization. 
That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing to everybody. The FBI w- is saying, oh, you know, may, this, is the, this is emotional and psychological child abuse, but this happened during your divorce, maybe because you didn't like the outcome. No, uh, there's two different things. Child abuse, divorce, two totally different things. I'm reporting child abuse. And the FBI, including Christopher Wray, who's the director of the FBI, he's a lying scumbag. Okay. I've written him three times. He hasn't responded any of the times. He knows this is going on. One of his quotes that he, or one of his statements and quotes that he said, our biggest thing is to protect the United States children, the citizens and the children of the United States. And he is failing and lying miserably. Okay. You can't say you're going to protect children and not give a shit about, you know, one of the major uh, child abuse factors in America. I, 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 you know what? I think that so often we're, this is the problem is so often we're told to look and refer to judges as they're the honorable, the honorable so-and-so and the honorable so-and-so, but the level of deception, lies, criminality, um, and child abuse that goes on with these honorable people is people would be really surprised because you're, it's just such a heartless system. And so I oh. really agree with what you're saying. You're calling this person a scumbag, but yeah, they really don't give a shit about kids. And let's just say that because it's true. That is. So that's why here, hold on. Stand in that truth. Stand in that truth. <laughs> well, child abusers wear black robes. <laughs> so <laughs> it's 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 a fact. These guys are child abusers. They wear black robes. They consider themselves honorable, and there's nothing honorable about them. But here's the culmination of all this shit. You report it to the DSS. You report it to the sheriff. You report it to the 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 uh, police department, and they all say, "Go away." Now, you absolutely have failure of due process. Without a doubt, supposed to have five days. You didn't have five days. He called your attorney to the stand, or she called your, you know, she made a uh, restraining order with fraudulent findings of fact, whatever the case is. And you bring it to the oversight committee. Okay. In my case, North Carolina um, Judicial Standards Commission. Okay, and you bring it to these people, Wanda Bryant, who heads that thing. It's nothing but a scam, and they and you send them exact orders. You send them proof positive that you did not get, you know, uh, due process, and they send you back. Go away. We didn't find anything wrong. We are protecting judges. We're not protecting your constitutional rights. So, at what point does a person? And I always ask this question. I've asked it to the FBI. I've asked it to all these people. At what point, and you know, is it going to take for somebody to pick up their Second Amendment right? I mean, how long is this going to stop, or is this going to continue before it stops? You know, they they are playing this game of destroying families, destroying children, destroying lives. And they're pretend, and they're like saying, "Oh, we got to protect our officers, who are the criminals com- that are doing child abuse, who are the criminals failing to report child abuse." No. When you know, and they're asking, "Oh, what?" You know, it's this, it's this air of society that we have to be really careful for our police, for our judges, for our you know deputies, but yet they're committing these atrocities and their oversight committees are just continuing to commit the atrocities. I mean, if you, unless you've been living under a rock, you've gone to YouTube, you've seen what police officers have done to people, how they abuse people. And almost every single oversight committee is like, Oh, nothing to see here. He did everything fine. Oh, we don't mind that. that, You know, I mean, the guys who killed, 
um uh forget god what is his name uh the, the guy who kneeled down on the neck and killed that guy um their oversight committee that's nah, fine yeah that's just part of our stuff we we kill people all the time but then when it went up and went up the ladder and they saw how much feet how much uh blowback they were getting oh we got to do something now I think it's so overwhelming to rage against the system or try and change the system or advocate for positive solutions in a corrupt system. And that's why I found you to be so curious, uh, such a curious cat, because I know how hard it is. You know, I, I think that now I'm at the point where I say to women and men that the best thing they can do is just never, ever, ever enter that system. Absolutely. That, that's, that's the smartest thing you could possibly do because yeah. you have to realize one thing before you stip, stick a toe into that pool that the game is rigged before you even get there. It's a stacked game, 100%. And you have psychologists that are taking, you know, um, working with certain lawyers to get certain outcomes. And all of this happens sort of behind the scenes. And so it's very stacked against good parents, very, very stacked to get good parents. And once they have a hold of your child, it's really about making money. So let's go back to your list, report your judge across 50 states in the U.S. You had how many people um, report their judge again? Um, how The judges we have are over 260 judges who've been reported as child abusers. 260 judges. Or as have been accused as, as child abusers. Absolutely. And right. the... And, Every across all the boards, you cannot you cannot write a single report against any judge. Every DSS organization, every police, everything, every sheriff will refuse to write a report and do a proper investigation. They are the untouchables, and that's another reason why I found you so fascinating. That you've had such a response, a significant response to your website and report your judge across 50 states. Um, I think we might need to start a, a list like that in Canada, um, a, a, a call of to action like that in Canada. You actually have one. Oh. <laughs> you can actually go to my website and write Canada. That'd be great. And then why, we have a thing for Canada. Can, we already have one Canadian reported judges as child abusers. Great. And now on your list, I noticed that there was some times three, times one. So, so tell us about that. <laughs> uh, we, you know, uh, let's let's talk about Hal G. Harrison, my judge. He's been accused as a child abuser three different times by three different people. Okay, the X1, X3, uh, you know, I don't put X1, I mean, you know, because it'd be redundant. But if it says X2, that's two different people who've accused that judge as abusing their children. If you see X3, X5, X whatever, we have people who've been accused four times, five times by different people. These are repetitive child abusers. I, I thought that was also noteworthy and significant that, that it's happened, that some judges have been filed two, three times on your list. By yeah, different, and by different people. <laughs> and you will not find this because every sheriff's department, every DSS, every one of them, they're that group of child traffickers will refuse to report on anything. So when one person comes, well, no one's ever done it. We're not going to do it. Then the second person comes in, well, no one's ever do it. We're not going to do it. That you know, those people need to be arrested for malfeasance for not performing their jobs one of the one of the harshest things that i learned and you know this in the united states every fit all 50 states have a law on the books that state if you are if you suspect a child is being abused you have to report it and they have a list of mandatory reporters that have anybody in the mental health industry, anybody in the police industry, anybody in whatever. And you cannot go into a city, you cannot go anywhere and try and report this where they will take that down and write it up. Now, one of the things that blows my mind is how do you 
expect me to honor the laws when you're not honoring them. I had Rich Sutherland from the FBI I was like, "Well, you know, you you, you need to go to your uh, you need to go to these politicians and make them write more laws." And I wrote him back. I was like, "What are you fucking crazy? They don't follow the laws now. You want me to run this, you know, circle jerk to try and you know write more laws? What are you crazy?" Well, you know what, Ken, is I think really, truly, too, we are so socially conditioned and programmed from a very young age to believe that the law is the law and that there's justice and that the law is there to protect us and then back to the best interests of the child, which I believe that saying actually came from the Nazi era. But it, so when we go into family court, we just get this very rude awakening because the law it's not the law. The law is how to, you know, the law is dependent on how this person is working with this person or what's at stake financially for this part of this system. So it's a whole systemic corruption. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's horrific. It's horrific for any parent, grandparent, family member that's having to deal with this and realizing you know, and like you, like me, I'm sure the laws are the law. I'm going to get treated fairly. Okay, you've heard best interest of the child. And then you realize it has nothing to do with family court. You realize that laws don't mean anything, not to these criminals who are abusing kids on a regular basis, not the police. You know, they want you, you abide by all the laws that we've made, but we're not going to freaking do it. I mean, you see that with the police out on the streets. It's illegal to beat somebody half to death, but the police do it and walk away because they're untouchable. And that's what they think about the judges. Oh, we have uh, judicial immunity. No, they should get rid of that shit. Judicial immunity is for people, is for judges and police officers to beat the crap out of people, abuse children, abuse parents, order child abuse, order domestic violence, and get away with it. I Sorry, I, I get kind of emotional when I'm talking. So. It's an emotional subject because we don't realize how powerless we are once we get into this system that yep. sucks all our resources, uh, destroys our children's lives. Um, it's, it's a very, very serious, serious topic it really yeah. is like, is there any way that you could see the system could improve or work yeah or yeah absolutely way? absolutely but it's 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 drastic because right now these officers these FBI agents, not, you know, Rich said he's going to take a look at this and honestly give me some feedback. So I'm going to, right now, I'm going to trust him by his word. Okay. But the only thing I see when you have this many people who are in power with guns, with the resources to kill anybody and everybody, with the resources to jail people willy nilly and make shit up. Uh, is a revolution against these tyrants and against these traitors to the United States of America and to Canada because there is so much money being made and the systemic inherent corruption of not reporting other people who are abusing children. We're talking family structures here. We're talking the basis for being a parent and they're destroying that on so many people on so many levels. And they refuse all the way up the ladder. You know, whether it's, you know, whether it's a politician or whether it's a lowly desk jockey who re refuses to write a report. These are criminals. I can't, I don't even look at honorable. I look at that. I'm just like, just put child abuser. Just put child abuser there. And the, the problem is, or one of the problems, is you have all these other judges. Supreme Court judges, uh, you know, judges who are, you know, who are not in family court, who are criminal judges. They know 
about all the criminal activity in family court that is ordered by these judges. Many of them are like, I'm not, a, I'm not in family court. I'm a different judge. No. The reason you're holding up your hands is you're trying to wash your hands away from all the criminal activity that you're seeing. Yeah, we have. Yeah, how can, you know, if you, if you know this is happening, you have to report it and you don't. Sorry, did I go off on another tangent? I probably did. <laughs> I, I mean, we haven't even talked about CPS on this on this program and all of the child, um, basically racketeering and with CPS. And another phenomenon that's going on in North America is that if you even suggest or acknowledge that there's abuse in your family, children are being handed over to child abusers um, rather than to the... Uh, the parent who's asking the system for support and for help. Um, there's it, it's in, it's in scary. Where this it's, woman has not, this, there's a woman in Calgary where I live, a really good uh, farm family, upstanding family, and she's been separated from her children for a year. And the father was allowed to move to an undisclosed location, relocate the kids to a school. She has no idea where her two daughters are. And this goes on right in our hometown, right under our noses all the time. It's, it's scary. It's scary. And one, you know, the only other thing I could think of that I would say, because this is, it's so systemic with DCS and stuff like that, um, is before revolution, people need to literally stand in front of the courthouse with a name of a judge is a child abuser. They don't want people knowing how bad they abuse kids. And the more people we have doing that and pointing, you know, and, and starting investigations, they can't ignore everybody. So I'm not saying everyone should go pick up their weapons and use their second amendment. Right. I am not saying that I am saying, start with, get a couple banners, get a couple flyers, stand in front of the courthouse, get some of these shirts. I sell these shirts, by the way. But, you know, and, and let people know what, you know, because let, let's face it, before we even started any of this, before we got in on this, before this happened to us, did you even know what uh, shared persecutory delusion was and psychological child abuse? Did you even have a thought? that the family courts are, you know, were anything but best interest, best interest of the child? Not usually. You, you could never imagine the worst nightmare that your life could turn into for decade, two decades, five yep. years, um, and that you could lose control. You can lose everything in your life, lose your children. For I, lo I lost really that bad. I lost nine years with my daughters. And when it was all said and done six years ago, when the separation happened, I lost over $5 million in everything I had. Wow. Everything I ever worked for. I had five pieces of property. I had a business doing a million dollars a year. I, you know, I was very successful in what, what I was doing. I believe you. I, and, and it is it really, honestly, you lose absolutely everything. <laughs> Um, I know my ex-spouse and I have probably put, well, about $1.5 million just in legal fees alone. Oh, alone. totally. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying, that, you know... Um, you can't stop. Like, you just, you can't stop. You can't opt out. I think that's really important to underscore. I, I, think, I think many people are doing it wrong because many people are in this and feel... Because the first thing they do is take your kids away. You feel isolated. You know what the hell's going on? They're they're basically isolating you from everybody, including your family and family members, because they don't generally know what the hell's going on. And yeah. so, you know, you as an individual, you go to the sheriff's office, you go to the uh, DSS. Many times, you go alone. That's one of the biggest mistakes. You need to get like four or five friends, family members. Guys, I need you to come here. We all need to file child abuse charges. So, and we need to do it live on, you know, Facebook and record it and post it that this son of a bitch 
guy or girl is refusing to re file a report. And we need to take, and we need to, and, and at that point, you have to threaten Second Amendment rights because they are screwing over your family, is what you believe. I'm not saying go ahead and kill them, but I'm saying go ahead and say, you, this is your job. This is your job. My child is being abused. All these people are saying it. You got to write this report and you got to send it up to the, up the chain. Because if you don't do that, you wind up with your child being further abused. It's devastating. I think what you said is really important is to not fight the system alone. So please believe whoever, believe that person when they come to you and they tell you they're being abused in family court, um, believe them, um, support them. So many men and women go into court and they face a, an honorable judge or a scumbag completely alone. And, you know, it's, it's, it takes so much courage to speak out against the system. So I really want to acknowledge you, Kenneth. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's very, that's very kind of you. And you, you're doing the same thing up in Canada. You know, I mean, that it takes a lot to have these podcasts, let people know about it. And, you know, it, you know, you're doing everything you can to literally try and push out the love, the kindness. And I could see that, but at the same time, wake people up to be like, this is such a devastating form of child abuse of separating a parent and a child and screwing them up psychologically for life. Well, and I think what, what the family court sort of has this idea, this agenda, very specific agenda that the role of, I'm going to use mother, the role of mother, the role of a parent is not important, not important. It can be replaced. Um, and when you break that bond between a child and their parent, that child is wounded and the trauma is profound and you start a cycle of inherited family trauma. For oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. And, and, and go, yeah. Do you, do you know all the stuff that goes on with a, with a child when you, when you really mess with its attachment disorder or attachment, they wind up, you know, the pot, these are all possible things that happen. And this is why when you go to the American psychological association, it, it how it's how they grow their base. When you disrupt a child's attachment, you get an attachment trauma disorder. Okay. You, um, you know, you're working with a shared persecutory delusion because that child, as you know, will sit wherever it's more comfortable because they just want to be very comfortable, you know, especially in their mind. If it's more comfortable to be with an abuser and cut off that targeted parent, that's what they do. By doing that, they have to become split. One parent is all good. One parent is all bad. Even though this parent is abusing me, I have to pretend that this girl and have a delusion that they are okay. What that entails now is borderline narcissistic personality disorders that creep in. Okay. Splitting, as you know, one parent's all good. One parent's all bad. Borderline, there is no gray. All good, all bad. You can see how this leads right into that. Narcissistic personality disorder. They have to be right because if they're not right, they're very uncomfortable. A child will do anything to get out of uncomfortableness, including you know, being in a delusion that they are right. Okay. Then you have depression because you just you you just killed off your dad you just killed off your mom now you're being just you know mean to that person and you have to block that you have to block that empathy okay now you have no empathy for people that you feel did you wrong even if it is delusional you have depression from doing that you have anxiety from doing that you have ptsd from doing that you have a higher ace score you know ace scores adverse uh, childhood experiences you don't have one of those from this you have three to five 
okay, which puts you in the realm. Your life expense expectancy is fifteen percent or is fifteen years shorter. You are going to be more susceptible to uh, drugs and pregnant early pregnancy and not able to have great relationships and have problems with their relationships. You are going to have cognitive dissonance. You are going to have the inability to have critical thinking skills. There is so much that goes with this, and the best thing that the American Psychological Association. Oh, wow, there's a client for life. We're gonna grow our base. And that's really, really, truly what it's about too. It's about feeding a system for generations. Yeah. For Exactly. And it comes, we keep coming back to that. We keep coming back to money. We keep coming back to so many of those core points that we started off with at the beginning of our talk today. So it's a generational wounding inherited family trauma that's destroying our future generation when we attack the family well you say you know that there's a term for that in psychology it's a cross-generational coalition so really yeah and what that is is when you as a parent or a grandparent or a great-grandparent you put your trauma into your child who's put their ch their trauma into their grandchild, put their trauma into their great grand. It, it's a cross generational coalition that does not stop until it's actually noticed. Mm -hmm. And somebody says, okay, let's work on this. Let's, let's address this. And that person has to be willing to address it because a lot of times narcissistic borderline people will not like to hear that and will walk away. So they will continue the cycle not caring because their empathy is not there. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Um, I would say that family court is not pro-family. It's not a pro-family place. And if you think it is, please, please research before you enter into the system. And I'd like to close today by asking everyone to just check out Kenneth's website. Go and check out childabusivejudges.com. And think for yourself, is this relevant? Is it important? Does it make sense? Look at who's filed. Um, like really think through it and let Kenneth and I know on this YouTube feed what you thought of our conversation, what your experience has been in family court, um, what points of this conversation um, resonated with you. What else can we invite people to do before we close today, Kenneth, as a ask, ask questions. I mean, there's so many people who don't know they're in a, they're in a three month, six month, two years. What is their best options? And always the best option is don't report child abuse alone. Do this with as many people as you can. Get your brother, your sister, your mom, your great aunt, whatever, that know about this and can say, I am suspecting psychological child abuse that is happening to my kid that the judge ordered. By the way, here's the Department of Justice's thing. And it says domestic violence harming one's, part, one's, uh, chill, harming one's relationship with his or her children. Make sure you have those things in hand. And uh, but ask questions because if you don't know what to do, you know we are really good at uh, answering questions and helping people. And, I mean that's one of the reasons that child abuse of judges was born is because you can't accuse a judge because nobody will do it. Yeah, change comes when we work together, stand in our yes. truth, and, and speak out. Speak out, just like Kenneth is. And uh, this has been a really great talk. I really enjoyed it. And, Thank um, you, Barbara. I really appreciate you inviting me on. Listen, if someone wanted to get a hold of you beyond this website, I know you've written one book, uh, a book that you'd like to share. Um, that's on I, Yeah, account. I've written one is called Victim, How the American Psychological Association uh, Kills Parents, Abuses Children, and Grows Their Base. The second book is called Killing Judges, and it's on Amazon. Just look up Killing Judges, Gottfried. I did get, I got to say this, this is so funny. I got a one-star review on my book, Killing Judges, because the guy says, damn it, I thought this was a how-to book. <laughs> no, it's not a how-to book. It's a why these judges are eventually going to be, you know, murdered because you have all these buffers and the reasons that, sh that judges are abusing kids. And people are now finding out five, 10 years ago, 
you were kind of finding out, but people now are really finding out how horrible it is for your kids that this is real child abuse. And I'm I'm trying to warn people, but they're you know the the systems don't care. But anyhow, those are my books. My books are written. Now I apologize. Okay, I guess I'm here, and Barbara lost her connection. So anyhow, uh, don't do it alone. Okay, do it with other people. Make sure you have three, five friends, family members, because that's the only way. And follow it up. Follow it up the next day. What are you doing? Follow it up the next day, the next week. Okay. Love you guys. Uh, time to go. Have a nice day.